Hi, my name is Jacob Youngblood. I'm a web developer here at National Control Devices. Today I'm going to show you how to troubleshoot your Zigbee Relay Controller. If you watch the Zigbee setup video and your controller still isn't working, follow these instructions and you should have your controller up and running in no time. All right, the first thing you're going to want to do is go to any of the Zigbee Relay Controller product pages and under the Resources section you'll see this Configuration Utility. Select that and it'll redirect you to digi.com and from there you want to download the latest version of XCTU. Select this, save file and I'm going to skip ahead in the video to save on time. All right, once it's installed you'll want to open it, select OK and then select run. All right, you want to hit next, I agree Next. Choose whether you want everyone to have access to XCTU or just you and select Next and Next. Alright, again I'm going to skip ahead in the video to save on time. Alright, eventually you'll get this pop-up menu. It may show up in your toolbar, but you'll want to select Yes. All right, now you have XCTU installed. Select Close. Close out of your downloads. All right, now what you're going to do is go down to your Start menu and open XCTU. Go to All Programs, Digi, and choose XCTU. Right from here, we're going to try and find the baud rate. So 115.2 is what it should be set at. And it looks like that's not what it's set at. So what you'll have to do is go through each one of these and select it and you choose test query. Um, this one's at 9600. I would try that one second and if that's not it, you'll just have to go through each one and test it individually. All right, now that we've found the baud rate, we'll go over to modem configuration and select read. The first thing we'll want to check is the PAN ID here. The PAN ID is what sets Zigbee networks apart. Um, if a Zigbee module does not have the right PAN ID in it, it won't talk to any of the other Zigbee modules. For instance, if the modem has a PAN ID of 755 and the relay controller has a PAN ID of 7, uh, there will be no communications between them. So you want to make sure those are always the same and I want mine to be set at 755 so that's right so let's scroll down to the baud rate and this should always be set at 115.2k baud unless it's a one or two channel relay controller those should be set at 9600 baud All right. another thing we can check is the version number you should always have the latest version um, which we do so All right. now that we've done that we'll just take out the module from the modem, unplug the relay controller, remove the module from the relay controller, and put it into the modem. All right, now we'll go over to PC settings, and it should be set at 9600 baud, so we'll test that. Unable to communicate with the modem. All right, so let's hit OK, and we'll try 115.2. Alright, so test that. Alright, so we'll go over to modem configuration and select read. Alright, the PAN ID is incorrect and this is one of the problems we were running into with our not communicating. So let's choose write. And down below we'll find our baud rate. All right. And since I'm using a one channel relay controller, uh, I'll want to choose 9600 baud and I'll choose right. All right. And it looks like the version number is the latest one. You'll want to check that as well. So we'll go back over to PC settings, 9600 baud and test. Right, that's communicating at the right baud rate. All right, let's exit out of XCTU, put the relay controller module back into the relay controller. 
and put the modems module back into the modem and reapply power to the relay controller. Now what we want to do is open up our ProXR software that we downloaded earlier. Right. So if you have a one channel relay controller, you choose this option. If you have a ProXR relay controller, you'll choose this option. Um, make sure you're on the right COM port and select OK. Right now let's refresh and see if we can find the device. All right, try this a few times. All right, looks like we couldn't find the device. So what we'll have to do is unplug the relay controller again, take out the module, and on the bottom of the module, you'll see a serial number with an upper and a lower portion. What you'll need to do is put in that serial number. The top serial number goes here, and then the lower serial number goes under the serial number low. All right, and we'll just name it Relay Controller. And select Add. All right. We'll put the relay controller's module back in. Reapply the power. All right. Now we'll select the relay controller we just created and hit select. All right. It found the device. Now let's try turning the relays on and off. All right, it looks like it's working perfectly. Um, if this didn't help you, your relay controller still isn't working, you can contact us. Our number is 417-646-5644. Our office hours are 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. Our office is open from Monday through Friday. And if you want to email us, you can email our technical support at travis at controlanything.com. And that's the video. Thanks for watching.